Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to the Ellis Motors channel. Um, picking up on part two of this weed eater slash craftsman slash AYP riding mower. Um, this is a 16 and a half horse overhead valve, 42 inch cut mower, and uh, it at the end of part one, y'all saw it start run, drive, mow. So now the goal in part two is to get it to start, run, drive, and mow better. And to look a little, a little bit better too. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, let me show you how bad off this seat is. The guy put a seat cover on it, but it's not really doing it justice. The seats actually come completely off of the mounting post on this. And it's basically just sitting there. And what I can do is I can keep the seat cover and maybe I can like gorilla tape it or something back onto the mounting post here. But um, as you can see, it is completely off the rocker, so to speak. So. I'm just going to toss that to the side for now. I'm not going to throw it away because I think I can repair it, especially with the seat cover to where I can use it. But it's not going to get used on this lawnmower. I can see that much. All right, so what we're going to do now is it looks like, because I have a complete seat assembly outside on a wizard that actually has a craftsman seat on it. Um, so it's, it's a carbon copy of this seat. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this clip off. Should have a good safety switch on it too. It's of the same era as this weed eater. So what we need is a socket set. We can probably just hit some impacts here and get it off. Um, uh, it's not a three eighths. I think it's a half. I'll just set y'all down. We'll get the seat off. I'll show you how to get the seat off, and uh, we'll continue on after that. All right, there you go. Let's see what we have. bolt it's a half inch bolt there probably three quarters this is the adjustment bolt here three quarters Keep the seat mount. What I'll do is I'll get the other seat off of the wizard mower the exact same way I just did this, and I'll catch back up with y'all when I get uh, get that seat. We'll put this one back on. All right, that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? It does have these cracks and stuff on the top, but the actual seating portion of the seat is in pretty good shape, all things considered. Um, I actually didn't have to take, I thought we had to take this whole assembly off, but I guess you can just take the two bolts off, take the seat off, and then put the two bolts back in. So you actually don't have to do that to the seat safety switch. Um, what I'm going to do next is put some tire tubes in the proper front tires of this. Um, I got to order the rear ones. I got some front ones here, so I'm going to wait on the rear ones. Um, order an air filter for it and order a deck belt for it and um, 
This one will probably be done. Give it a good wash. After I put the tubes in it, I'm going to give it a wash this afternoon. Um, I'll give you all a look when it's all cleaned up. Um, and we'll go from there. And also, I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link to how I put these tire tubes on as well. Um, just so you'll have that. Um, I won't show that on camera because it gets kind of redundant after you do it over the course of about five or six mowers. So um, I'll, I'll uh, reserve that for the link in the description. All right, y'all, the deck belt came in. Let me show you all one more time. Again, what you've got to do to get this deck belt off or to get the deck belt back on and off and on. Um, this is the mechanical blade engage type. So you have a mechanical and a blade and a cable blade engage type. Now for the cable, it's a little bit easier because all you got to do, I think, is remove that cable tensioner. For the mechanical, this piece right here is in the way. It actually splits the gap between the belt. And so what you have to do, pull the, pull the pin out, lower the deck all the way first, pull the pin out, and then pull this lever out of the way. And then also for your deck height. Um, also, you're going to take I see it better on the other side, but you're going to take the bottom piece of this arm off. There's a cotter pin on the other side, which will be easier to get from over there. So let me show you all over there. I think I, I showed this all to y'all whenever I took it off. I just wanted to reiterate you have to take these back off to put the deck belt back on. Or to take it on and off whichever one because it runs actually in between under this arm or, or over this arm and then under the other side so you kind of have to finagle it through there and get it through that arm where you create the two gaps so let me go ahead and put the deck belt back on this um, and then we'll take a look at the blades. And after we take a look at the blades, sharpen the blades, this thing's going to be good to go. Alright, so here are these blades. Again, you just take an impact 9 sixteenths. You get them right off the mower. Lift is still good on them. Edge is still good on them. I'm going to touch up the sharpening a little bit. They really don't even have that many, if any, chips in them either. Which is really good. So I'm going to sharpen these, put them back on the mower. I already got the deck belt on, like I mentioned. It's no looser than, or it's no tighter than the other one. So I guess the other one's all right. Um, I can leave it lying around <clears throat> for one that's really bad off. Either way, this one have a new deck belt. Sharpen blades. Get it back on the ground. We'll give this thing a final test. Alright y'all, so here's the final walk around of this riding mower, um, weed eater. Let's see if I can remember what, what all we did to it. We got new fuel lines in it, and a shutoff switch, new air filter, uh, tubes in all four tires. So, we got that going on, um, new deck belt, and an E-clamp for the steering. And that's about all it needed. It needed a little bit of work on that um, carburetor for the um, the anti backfire valve or the anti backfire seal, and I think the bowl might have had a very very small pinhole in it. One of the two. Um, so we replaced both of those as well. We got a good good little mower here. Uh, I am going to leave this mulching plate on. This mulching plate actually goes to a newer model riding mower because it's got this little latch in it. However, it should work just fine for the purpose that we're going to use it to. And no, hopefully no dummy would actually... A lot of people take these things off and take the discharge chute and just let it shoot out. 
kind of like I've got one over there that's, that does that. Uh, I've actually had two of them that people have done that. I don't know why people cut like that, but put that mulching plate on there, advertise as a mulching mower. If somebody really wanted to get a discharge chute, they're only about 20 bucks. If I had the mounting hardware, I would probably get one, but this works just fine. Uh, so, well, that's probably about $50 in parts, roughly. Maybe 55 So if we go back and do the math, I had an LT2000. This came with the same lot as that LT2000 that I picked up for $200 for all four of them. I got the LT2000 going. I only had about not more than $50 in it. So you're talking about $250. I sold that for $500. So anything I make off of this is like pure profit, which is great. And if I get a trade in, that's even better. Um, also, we changed the seat out. So I just wanted to give you all kind of a little bit of a. Um, synopsis of kind of how everything turned out here uh, there is some surface rust on the deck I don't really concern myself with surface rust especially on mowers that are a little bit older I could do an aerosol overhaul or just spray paint it real quick but there's no holes in it and I haven't had it off the mower and so um, people are just looking for like a I'll probably advertise this thing for 400 it's probably not worth no more than that with it being a single cylinder um, have a twin cylinder in there that's actually in a little bit worse shape advertised for 425 I'll have to probably knock it down at the time of filming this is middle of March you'll probably won't see this until the first of May so hopefully both of those mowers will be gone by then but um if I get 354 it I'll be happy uh, somebody's gonna have a good lawnmower so let me set y'all down deck belt's actually too loose for the mower. I order the right one. <clears throat> Got a nice little backfire too. How about that? I ordered the right one for it. So I thought Very interesting. I even looked up the part number for it. Yep, 
Yeah, I did WE one six five four two A. Man, I, I may have not looked at the manual, but I looked up the deck belt, and that's the one it gave me. Okay, so change plans. Let me put the old deck belt back on it. Worked great with the old deck belt. Had a little slack on it, but it's very interesting. I have a deck belt here. I'll cross-reference. It's it is a Craftsman deck belt, so it will definitely work on something that I have. <laughs> deck belt back on it it just seemed to be loose it worked good and I'll make sure that the mechanism is working right because it cut the fuel to it while it was running. All right, let me make sure that the blade engage is still working right. Yeah, it is. All right, well, let me put that other deck belt back on it because apparently this is um, too loose. <laughs> Although I thought I got the right one for it. I guess I didn't. We'll do another final test here in just a second. I'll have to cross-reference it, but I think this deck belt actually goes to a cable drive deck. Which, if that's the case, I'm actually getting in good luck because I actually have a deck out here that needs a belt. And I think that the travel on these is a little bit further than on the mechanical blade engage decks. So I think I'm going to be in good shape. When it comes to that, um, got a couple more out here. You, you know, I got Craftsman City. I know this is to a Craftsman. I'll refer. I'll look and see what type of belt I bought, and I'll let y'all know what it goes to. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put this other one back on. All right. So I don't know how well I can see this, but on Parch Tree, right here. I've got the deck belt. This is a 16542A, which is exactly what that model of weed eater mower is right there. The belt it shows, and I'll show you the part that I bought. I don't know how well I can see this. Number 68 is right there. It's 144. Two zero zero. I don't know if y'all can see that. There we go. One four four two zero zero. It's exactly the belt that I bought for that and it didn't fit. Go figure. Oh well it'll get used on another lawnmower. We're gonna wrap this one up. If I knew that I'd have just went ahead and did all my final test and posted it up this weekend for sale. But now it's got to wait another week, unfortunately. So let's just do, I'll make I'll show you all that the blades and stuff work. I got the deck leveled and all that too, so shouldn't have any issue. Also, this thing just sounds a little different than the other Briggs engines I've had. I don't know if it's running a little fast or if it just sounds a little different. But, um...
that should be a good lawnmower for somebody. I'm going to let it run for maybe about 10 minutes just to cycle some of that fresh fuel in there. And uh, yeah, I think 400 bucks will do it, do this one justice. Uh, it'll run good, it'll cut good for whoever gets it. Not a perfect mower by any means, but it does the job, gets the job done, and rolls on with it. So I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video series. And um, I'll catch y'all in the next one. As a hint, y'all see I've got plenty more to work on here coming up. So you'll see those coming up in future videos. But thank y'all for watching this one. I'll catch y'all in the next one. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, at Ellis Mowers 09. Or you can search Ellis Mowers in the search box and that'll get you where you need to. I'll catch y'all then. So this is the part of the video where uh, I say, hey, it's clean, it's running good, I'm going to list it for $450 or so, and I'm going to sell it. Not this one. <laughs> so after filming, I was on its final run for 10, 10 or so minutes, right? And... Uh, running 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 and then you know i mentioned some in the video that it seemed like it was running a little on the fast side almost like the governor or something was a little out of adjustment i checked the springs and everything and they they looked good like the spring tension was good the governor seemed like it was working properly well i was running it and i don't know if i can show y'all i don't know what it'll do but <coughs> If they'll even do anything, truthfully. So the thing is, I can't get it to run now, and I know it's not a fuel delivery issue. Um, because all it's doing is, I can do the throttle. Here, I can try it maybe once or twice more. I probably won't be able to get it to start on a cold start. I don't want to mess up the starter or anything, but all it'll do is idle. You can do this right here all day. Throttle's moving over here. Governor Springs moving, and all it'll do is idle. And I go over here to the arm, governor arm. I don't know why I closed the hood, sorry. Go here to the governor arm, and it wasn't moving at one point, but now it will. And it's it's got way too much tension on it even at low throttle so the way the symptoms are sounding the internal governor went out on this thing unfortunately um, i can check the fuel issue but it'll run it'll idle it just won't rev up so if it was a fuel issue it would rev up and then die so I'll put some um, starting fluid down there to see if I can get it to crank like that, but pretty sure the internal governor shot on it. As a result, what I'm going to do a while back to do a quick, to do a quick change, I could break that thing apart and put a governor in it and call it a day, but again, ordering parts, waiting on parts, stuff like that. I've got this 14 and a half horse that I bought for 40 bucks a while back. Um, it needs a coil slash stator on it. The only wild card is if the stator slash coil, whatever you want to call it, like I don't understand. I don't. 
I haven't really been inside a Briggs, popped the flywheel off yet. So um, I don't know if they have like mounting posts and I hope one of the mounting posts isn't shot on it. Because if the mounting post is shot inside this motor, I am going to, I'm not going to be up a creek, but I'm not really going to be able to use it and have it uh, have a charging battery with it, which is a big deal. Um, well, well, it's not a huge deal, but I would definitely detract from how much I'd be able to sell them the mower for. So what I'm going to do is a quick fix, and we'll try and knock it out in the morning because I don't think it'll take too too much to get it done. I'm going to throw this 16 and a half off of it, and I'm going to put that 14 and a half on here. There's everything else about this lawnmower is ready to go. I am at the point in the season when I'm filling this just to where I need to get things out of the door. They are going as fast as I can sell them right now, or as fast as I can fix them. So I'm going to knock this out. You'll see this in part three. Uh, this weed eater just didn't want to leave yet. So uh, we'll get that going in part three, and I'll catch y'all there. Um, if you want to catch me doing real-time updates on what I'm working on right now, you can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook at Ellis Mowers. I'll catch you over there. I'll catch you right here on my next video for part three. Talk to you then.